Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Steel blank um, or a steel door for an opening that I have. The door itself is rusted out, but the frame is in decent condition. Well, that sounds easy. It's an, I have an Amweld number, if that helps. It doesn't seem to, that that goes anywhere, though. It won't. Um, I know what, you know, I know what that number is. It doesn't, it won't tell me anything about your door beyond the fact that it's fire rated and that there's a label on the door that has that number and other information on it. So in order to get you a replacement door, you're physically just going to tell me the size of the door. I need it this wide. I need it this tall. Here's the, here are the locations for the hardware. Um, and then at that point, we just, you know, get the door made and send it to you. Okay. I got the dimensions for the the door itself. Okay. Yeah, that's great. 43 and 3 quarter wide. Okay. Is that standard? Um, it is a standard door size. We would call that 3 foot 8. Um, I would I would stop short of saying that it's common. Uh, but, yeah, 3 okay. foot 8 is a standard size. Sure. All right, and then it appears that it's 83 inches tall, but I think it's been trimmed off. The frame is a seven-foot frame. Yeah, so a, a, a standard door would be 83 and an eighth. Okay. Okay. Just a standard door doorknob height. Um, just need a, a single hole in it. Okay. Um, and one of one other question I had is instead of three hinges, do you have the continuous hinge? That can easily be done, sure. Okay. Is the door width changed if you put a continuous hinge on it, or is it just thin enough that it, it, it if it's in there? So there's there's three different – well, there's many different types of continuous hinges. The primary types are full mortise or concealed, half surface, and then full surface. If you wanted the hinge that went between the rabbit of the frame and the door, it would definitely require a door that's been pre-fit for that. If you wanted to slap the hinge on the face of the frame and the face of the door, no undersizing would be required for that full surface type. Okay. So it's a matter of what type you want. Okay. All right. It's probably cheaper just to go with the surface mount hinge, full surface mount hinge, than having the door and custom cut to that width, correct? In speak at this point of the conversation, the answer is yes. Okay. Okay. So I, I like it priced with the, the surface mount hinge also. Okay. Continuous surface mount hinge. Um, that is certainly no problem. Um, a FS. So, do you know where that hit, that lock is located? I'm standing by the door. I can I can measure it for you if you want. Yeah. Well, you need to know that so that we're pricing you the right door. So, hook your tape measure to the top of the door and drop it down to the center of the lock that's there. Okay. Give me one second. Take your time. It appears it's 43 and a half. Oh, that's great. Perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Uh, okay. So let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So other than the continuous hinge, so here's the bottom line. Yeah, no, we can do this. I just have to get it quoted from the factory. Three, eight. No, here it is. Perfect. Um, other than the door and the hinge, what else do you need a price of? Um, that's all at this point. Do you want filler plates for the hinge preps and the jam? Um, no, that wouldn't be needed. It's an outside door. It's just to go on a dock, so it doesn't matter if they're they're open or not. I mean, it's just Got cosmetic, it. correct? Um, 
it may be cosmetic. If it's a non-fire rated door, it would be cosmetic. If it's fire rated, you you would you would want those there. Yeah, it's non-fire rated. Okay. Um, so what about something simple like a door sweep? Um, is there anything else no. that you might require? Nothing. Okay, cool. That's easy. Um, so what's your email? I'll send you over 20 minutes. I'll send you over a quote. No problem. Is it is the shipping expensive? I mean, I know it's freight because it's such a big object. Um, it's going to be uh, it's going to approach the cost of the door. Yes, the answer is um, it will be a, a a line item on the quote that you'll say, "Yep, that's got to ship here, common carrier." <laughs> so, yeah, it's, okay. it's definitely going to be a component when it's just one door. If it's twenty doors, it's not a big deal per door. But yeah, where are you guys shipping out of? Uh, outside of Chicago. Chicago. Okay. And do you have an extension or something that I can dial you back and get you specifically? Yes, it is 1112. Okay. All right, not a problem. I do have a couple other doors. Um, one would be like a back door, but I've never done, they're wanting me to try to do the frames and the doors themselves, but the frame is poured full of cement. So... I don't know exactly what I'd be getting into there. I'd probably get a knockdown frame, I'm guessing, to put it back in there. Mm, maybe. Um, the first ta task to, you know, get handled is how are you going to get the old frame out? Right. So the first question is, do you want to do this work, or are you going to have, you know, are you going to say, listen, get a mason to, to do this work, and then you'll come and hang the door once the frame is in? Is that the, does the mason normally put the frame in? Does he? Yeah, a mason is who would who would normally do that sort of work. Okay, all right. I'll try to un unclear on that if it would be a you know actually a brick layer because it's it's actually setting a door frame, so I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So let's probe that a little bit. How if you were to approach removing that frame, what what would you do? What do you what do you think you would try? Um, I'm guessing a jackhammer at the beginning, but maybe a <laughs> yeah. cut, cut the concrete, you know, where the frame meets the wall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, brute force is the bottom line. The problem with brute force is, you know, you don't want to disturb the rest of the wall. What some people will do is they're going to get a big gas-powered, you know, uh, cutoff tool with a 14-inch blade in it, and they're just going to go to town. Um, they're going to slice on one side, um, and that will go a long way to getting it out, and you're going to need to, you know, you're going to hit whatever the anchoring device is behind there, so it'll be quite nasty, um, but that's one approach that it's typically done. There are other, I've heard of contraptions uh, that will clamp on or bite into the jam, and it literally will pull it away from the wall, but it's some means of destructive removal is the bottom line, and you just want to do so without disturbing anything because you want you need to have yeah, something to go blur, back uh, to brick and block. yeah um and block is awful, yeah, that's why i'm deterring away from it but they're wanting they're wanting me to try it to save money so well here's the problem with that if they hire a mason back in the old days it would be 500 bucks to set a frame in the old days so there ain't no way to save money and set and pull that frame out it is not cheap you could you could dick with that all day long um so yeah it's you know, prepare them for the, you don't do this cheaply. You know, that's there's no way around it, whether whether T. Siegel does it or the local bricklayer does it. Um, yes, sir. But but that but that gas powered saw that you could rent with some masonry blades in it is the way that you will probably be able to get a lot of it out um, fairly quickly. It's just it's the unknown of not knowing what you're going back into. You know, what are you going to have? Right. So if you were to get that saw cut out as best as you could and then cold chisel the rest of it off, you've got to – and then clean the opening. And then you would ideally want a welded frame that you would slide into place. You would mark and then mark for holes, for bolts, pull the frame out, drill the wall, and then use sleeve anchors. Or, of course, the mason comes in and tooths out courses of brick block. Um, so that T anchors can go back in, mortar can be pumped back in again. Um, I had one guy that would drill a big hole at the top of each jam and use a baker's bag or a grout bag. Just think of a cake decorator, but a large one. And right. they would squeeze yeah. may, uh, grout back into it. Um, and, you know, 
and at the end of the day, your your ability to install this is really limited by your imagination and your skill set and your tools. Like if it was me, I might consider trying to put some steel down to the wall using Tapcons or whatever and then welding my frame to it. The other thing is you want to consider the guy who's going to come behind you. How awful of a job will he have to rip this out in 12 years? <laughs> um, Nobody you know, worries, worries about the next guy. I know. Well, that's true. I, I, I dabble in the world of locksmithing, so it's one of our guiding lights of keeping good records because there will be somebody behind us trying to decipher our chicken scratch. Um, yeah. So, you know, so that's the bottom line. I think the moral of the story is it ain't going to be cheap, so get over it, whoever the end user is, um, and that they need a door and frame that obviously operates. So um, I can tell you all that I know about it, and I, I basically just yep. did. That'll work. I thank you for your input, and I'll look look at the quote and see what we can come up with. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Bye bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.